This is Angela with Danceable Thoughts, and this is our summer podcast series, Listen at Your Leisure and Let It Sink In. And today we are celebrating, this weekend we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. And I find this to be such a fascinating topic because it was something from my youth, and I would be... um, remiss if I said to you, oh, I remember watching it because I was five, six years old. I don't really remember watching it, but what I can remember was all the hype and hoopla and buildup going into it, and uh, I can vividly picture a little souvenir glass that who knows where it came from, the gas station or out of a box of cereal, that depicted the moon landing that stayed in my house through most of my childhood. Um, I feel like we do a great job now with our kids' birthday parties, things we do with our team. We build hype up. We get a theme. We work with it. We develop it. You see it in media. You know, this weekend they released the trailer for Cats. Ah! And Top Gun 2, double ah! Uh, We get all this hype and media to get us interested But what I'm wondering is, are we really doing enough to get ourselves and our students to re-achieve what I'm going to call not just research into whatever entertains us, but curiosity about what entertains us? You know, it's an interesting differentiation. You can get on YouTube and you can research a topic and then you end up down a rabbit hole because you find all these videos that are semi-related to what you're doing and then you oh that one looks funny and oh my gosh I can't believe they did that and and everybody jokes that you go down the rabbit hole and it's like four hours later and you're watching eyebrow tutorials. Uh, I think that that's entertainment and and that's okay, but is that really curiosity? What What is curiosity to a student? Well, right now, you're probably going to need to reteach them. You know, I could Google all these things. And speaking of Google, Google Doodle is even giving us information about the moon landing. Um, you need to check out the Google Doodle because it talks about um, the perspective of the astronaut that was on the uh, the lunar orbiter, he didn't actually get to go down on the module. Conley, I believe is his name. And it's really amazing to listen to his point of view about the whole experience in just a short Google Doodle. Again, it's information and they present it in a way that is clever and entertaining, but will it create curiosity? Well, how does this bring everything around to what we do as teachers? Well, we especially as artistic humans and performing arts people, I feel like we have an obligation to re-establish the connections in the brain that create the question marks, the curiosity level. We talk often about creativity. Let's talk about curiosity. I got all the inspiration for this week's podcast from my astronaut geekiness. Um, I was in, of course, the airport of all places. What a place for inspiration. In one of those, you know, stores, and it was the Houston airport. It was celebrating Johnson Space Center, and the store's T-shirt display had a T-shirt that said, Soar like Glenn, Excel like Buzz, and Explore like Neil. And And I thought that was really an amazing thing because boom, 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 it delineates three of the Mercury and Apollo Apollo astronauts all poom in one t-shirt and said experience Johnson Space Center. And I thought, I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on a dance version of that for us. But before I do that, I want to do exactly that. I want to celebrate these achievements that came from a generation that didn't have as much technology as we can buy in a cell phone. And now you've heard that over and over But until you really think about it, um, it it doesn't wash over you, okay? And uh, what I think is that we could do some things with our students, our teams, our classes, to help them not look at projects as research projects, but as curiosity projects. It's a great reframing, curiosity projects. So look for me in the next couple of I don't know, projects that I present to you to start working with the word curiosity projects instead of research projects. 
Um, our kids will, I think, blossom when they think, oh, I can ask a few questions and branch out into these different areas. It's all about reframing and also retraining their brains to not be satisfied with the first result. So that's what I think we do a really great job in the performing arts anyway. You know, we watch the dance, we listen to the, to the uh, music. We're never really quite perfectly satisfied with the first result. Uh, we, we explore it, we perfect it, we trial and error it, we watch, you know, that part. We wonder if we would change a level here, maybe reorganize the staging there. It creates curiosity. We call it creativity, but I'm going to call it curiosity. So why don't you infuse your own thinking every time you say, I've got to do a piece of choreography or I've got to stage something. Use the thought curiosity as you are reworking pieces of choreography. Curiosity when you are coming up with a new topic. Curiosity when you are teaching your students even just the tiniest little bit of background. You know, we pick music and we go, hey, I need you to dance to this. Oh, we pick a script if you're in, in theater and you say, I want you to act this out. Well, actors are trained to do a little more background to be more curious about the role they're playing. Well, why don't we be a little more curious about the dances that we are asking our students to dance? And I don't think that you have to give them a project where they have to find the origin of the plie, but it wouldn't be a bad thing to give them a little bit of thoughts about curiosity. You know, how did this style actually develop? Or when was the first palm routine actually put on the floor? or out on the field, or even more hilarious, you know, say to them, you know, what do you think happened the first time somebody did a high kick routine? Because we're thinking, oh, you know, Moulin Rouge is coming back as a Broadway show. Um, we think of, you know, Half Times and Kilgore Rangerettes and Apache Bells, all our beautiful Texas dance teams kicking their heels up. Um, thinking curiosity-wise, what were the audience's reactions to some of those, those, shall we say, creative developments? Curiosity doesn't have to be a deep dive research project, but it's a way of thinking more fully about the activities you're engaged in. And so let me take that back another step to where I was thinking about this whole idea of the moon landing and how it was experienced by the people around me. Uh, you know, it was really a thought in my head that you, you had to be there watching the telecast to know whether it was going to be successful. Uh, you wanted to know what it was like. Um, I can imagine the grown-ups of our previous generation, you know, they probably had great, you know, anxiety. What if I'm sitting here with my family and something goes terribly wrong, which is not was not uncommon. You know, we had a rocket blow up on the launch pad. I can bring you forward in time to my own generation when the Challenger disaster happened. We were, you know, students were watching it in their classrooms in real time because on board was a teacher. And uh, so students were watching it and you have to learn to respond to both the glory of the moments and the anticipation or worry that something might go wrong. And if something does go wrong, how do you address the real human emotions of sadness that we feel collectively in moments like that? But we can't let that fear hold us back from experiencing it and being in the moment. So I, again, I'm loving the, the inspiration from a t-shirt in an airport, you know, soar like Gwen, you know, get up there, get out there, it, you know, orbit the earth, go faster and farther than anyone ever expected you to. And when I say anyone, I might probably need to say you, anyone you or yourself expected you to. It's pushing those limits. If I've learned nothing from watching all these amazing athletes who train their bodies and do these, you know, I, you know, all these decathlon and Ironman competitions and stuff is that the human body is an amazing thing. Given the opportunities to push its limits and train to get right up to the edge of the limits before you step over, 
incredible things that are accomplished. We watch sports teams that transform and, and succeed. We understand pushing and soaring. Soaring isn't just flying through the air. Soaring is a mental state where you just keep going higher and higher, and you get up there and you stay up there. Um, not like you're an airhead, that sometimes might be me, but you get up there and mentally you soar through ideas. You don't let anybody bring yourself down. Then the second thing is excel. Excel like Buzz Aldrin. You know, excel and push yourself like these astronauts who did not know what the limits might be. Of course, they, they said, all right, well, no one's been in space or no one's walked on the moon or no one's tried to, you know, actually land on the moon and then take off and come back. You know, you had to, you had to believe that you would excel. You had to trust your training. We should do that with our students. We need to teach them to trust their training. Of course, you know, they skip ahead. They want to go right to the trick that they researched or they were curious about on YouTube or any of the videos. But they, they need to know that excelling doesn't mean skipping over the first steps. Ex excelling really comes from step-by-step -step progression. You excel because you stay steady towards the, the goal. You stay steady in a system a policy, procedures, whatever it is, whether it's the way you want your team to be disciplined, it's the way your team you want your team to perform. You get there not by jumping immediately to the end goal and giving it a try, but you get there by excelling each step at a time. Achieve, 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 achieve. Get those systems in place to train yourselves, and that's how you eventually successfully take that final step. Then explore like Neil. You know, um, I often talk about Neil Armstrong and, and his achievement. Um, you know, the famous quotes about it's one step for man, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Um, explore like Neil also reminds me that your achievements and the achievements of your team members, they don't belong just to you. It's everybody. It's everybody's accomplishment when you have not just a great performance, but a great practice. Probably even more so, it's everybody's achievement when you have a great practice. And then how do I realign that with the word explore? Well, you'll never know until you ask all of your team members, your team buddies, whatever you want to call them, your charges if you're the director, until you say, I need you to explore and I need you to try different things. If the only way you teach right now is the way you taught before, if the only way you run your team is the way your team was run when you were a line member, okay, tradition is great, but how do we explore ways to get different and higher, I guess you want to say, results. You have to explore not just places and people, but methods. Explore different systems of getting things done. And I'm going to talk a lot about this this fall um, in some of the other podcasts, but I just want you to get that in your mind, that exploring um, isn't always just about going somewhere or thinking thoughts. It's about trying new methods stepping into some different ways of doing things. You can't walk on the moon like you walk on the earth. You can't moonwalk necessarily like Michael Jackson until you try it. Um, it's a funny thought just to play with those words, but to think about it. You can't always walk the way you walked before. Okay, you can't teach the way you were taught. You not you're not going to be able to get these kids necessarily to learn the way you learned because they're on a different planet. They're in a different orbit. Um, they've got different technology that is, I'm going to say, distracting them, but also helping them to soar, excel, and explore. And it's up to us to be at mission control figuring out the way to get all the working parts together. 
speaking of all the working parts and a little less out there in outer space but still something spinning in orbit um, many of you got to play with um, I call them my choreography spinners it's a danceable thoughts product that I came up with and uh, I haven't outsourced the production so it's still me and very shall we say Etsy around here making my own um, humankind made products not manufactured by a machine but I've got the spinners I've got a product listing you can go on to uh, the Danceable Thoughts webpage on Facebook uh, or you can go to the Danceable Thoughts website page and you can find the Google form that will help you reserve a set of spinners and I'll put them together for you you'll get the lesson plan um, or the not lesson plan but the ideas for ways to use them and the spinners are uh, ready to start you know shipping out to you guys so that you can use them in different ways make them part of the system of running your classes also another thing that I know you're getting your rooms all decorated your dance uh, dance spaces are getting themed up or at least inspired with great posters um, I have two other things that I really want you to look into uh, of course there are the Josie posters the cutie Josie posters are all about some technique issues the you know all-purpose plie and and uh, terrific turns and then even using imagery for alignment so don't forget about the Josie posters uh, we ordered them for convention last year and they're uh, not quite but almost gone so reminding you that the Josie posters are something if you contact me you can get the Josie posters for your classroom and last little promo for you is the word walls talking about decorating your room um, what I know is that when I was working with the Dance It Out cards, I found a lot of friends who needed some help, um, dance student friends, who needed some help understanding terms, typical dance terms. So I'm hoping that uh, you're going to be using a word wall that also works really great for a T-test goal for you guys. Uh, hope you're using a word wall. If you're not, I will customize one with you with the terms I feel like are the most important and you can give me some. And because I really do actually enjoy doing all the graphic design stuff, even with my limited skills, I will customize them to match your theme. So if your theme is outer space, I will have cute little astronauts and uh, great planets and stars and galaxies, whatever it takes to make the theme jump out so that your classroom information is matching up with the thematic stuff that inspires your kids to soar, expel, excel, and explore um, dance in all types. So I hope that you guys are having a wonderful summer. We're coming to the end. Most of you are back at camp or will be very soon. Um, again, the summer podcasts have been Listen at Your Leisure and Let It Sink In. I hope you enjoy these, and I'll see you coming around the dark side of the moon or something geeky like that. Have a great end of summer.